May the peace of God fill the church of God. Jesus. May that peace, perfect peace, be your experience in your home this new year. I want to welcome you into a new year. For those who have the opportunity of sharing with us, we had a mighty good time in the presence of the Lord welcoming the new year on our knees and before the altar it was wonderful as we took time to express some of what the lord had done oh so much more we didn't have time to talk about uh, right here on thursday evening from uh, about 6 p.m till 9 and we even stretched our faith to list those things that we believe the almighty god for in the year 2016 and for all those that have written i declare them done in the name of jesus Amen. his will shall be perfected in your life this year Amen. the lord told me to tell you that this year will be a year of completions Amen. the lord will perfect everything that concerns you Amen. the lord will fight for you and he will walk in your favor he will bring to pass those things that you desire of him according to his will paul writes to the colossians in chapter 2 i am complete in him and because the word of god says so i declare you are complete in jesus I don't know what your disability or inabilities are, but in Jesus, you are complete. Amen. I don't know the limits of your education, the limits of your strength and your finances, but Jesus said you are complete in him. Amen. I don't know what projects lie unfinished in your family. I don't know what programs uh, you fell stuck in the middle of the way, but God says this is the year of completions and that will be your experience in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. now this is what we're gonna do we'll give you an opportunity if we didn't have that on Thursday night we'll give you an opportunity to write down those things you want the Lord to do for you to complete in your life to help you with this year and I want you to place it before God and give him thanks every time you know what December 31 you will be praising God wherever you are. Amen. You will. You will. We have watched the Lord year in, year out do for us beyond our imagination. And I want us to make some pieces of paper available as this service continues. Pastor, and just lift them up. If, if you want to express your faith in a piece of paper, make that list. 1 to 5, 1 to 20, 1 to 10, whatever your list is. And I want you to just trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Before this service is out, just say, God, this is my faith list. And this is my year of completions. And you'll see God complete things in your life. Complete things in your family. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to thank God because already we are having uh, reasons to celebrate. We've mentioned Pastor Tumor's birthday yesterday. We've mentioned Elira's birthday today. I'm sure there are many more reasons to celebrate. I think one of the Wabike sons um, had a wedding on Thursday, this past Thursday. Did I get that right? If the newest couple in the church are around today, could you please stand? We're just happy for you, for your newfound love. Okay, maybe they're not here, but oh, praise the Lord. Congratulations. Just hug that woman for me. Hug her. Hug her. Oh, look at that. That's what happened on Thursday. We were not there, but we're so glad. Could you please just give them a warm handshake if you're around them? If you want to have that kind of blessing for you or for your daughter or son, just if you're around them, give them some uh, pioneer love. Thank you so much. We appreciate you and we pray that God Almighty uh, will surprise you uh, with good things this year in the name of Jesus. Uh, children, you are welcome to church in Jesus' name. Oh, the children are not here. You are welcome in Jesus' name. I want you to tell me who is better. I'm going to give you two 
um, two boys. It's going to be a tale of two boys. I have about four of them. Just four of them. You tell me which one is better. Maybe somebody can tell us why. Are you ready to go? All right, boys and girls. The first two boys in the Bible, what are their names? Yes. Cain and Abel. All right, very good. We find the story in, in Genesis chapter 4. So, Cain, at the end of the story, was alive. And Abel was dead at the end of that story. Isn't that right? Even though Abel was dead, Cain was alive. So, who was better out of both of them? Uh, what's your answer, Pastor? Abel was better, but Abel was dead. He was still better. Oh, okay, thank you. Very good answer. How many children agree that Abel was better out of the two? Raise your right hand. All right, good, good. Abel was better. So that means even when you do the right and death happens, it doesn't matter in the eyes of God. Death or no death, you still win. God always wins. Do you say amen? amen. All right, let's find two other boys. I found two boys, uh, Esau and Jacob. Esau was the oldest. Esau was the macho guy with muscles. He could hunt and kill all kinds of animals. And Jacob was a mama's boy. But you know the story in the book of Genesis. Esau and Jacob. Who was better? Who can tell me? Okay, the boys cannot tell me now. The girls cannot. Who was better? Jacob. How many agree that Jacob was better? Raise your right hand. Okay, thank you. How many think Esau was better? Okay, one person thinks Esau was better. Okay, two. All right, that's all right. But let me ask the old church. Was Esau better than Jacob? Okay. Even though he was stronger, he was a warrior. He could kill anything. He wasn't better. Why? Because for a pot of soup, he sold his birthright. He sold his future. You will not sell your future in Jesus' name. All right, good. I have another story. Not a very popular story, but you're going to have to tell me who is better out of these two boys. One of them was Amaza. The other was a Cushite. You just call him a Cushite. Everybody say Cushite. Because he was from the, the land of Cush. And that's the name they call him, Cushite. Now, let's call him Cushite for the purpose of today. Aimaz was with General Joab. They had just finished a war and they needed to take the news of the victory to King David. King David was in the palace at home. So Aimaz went to Joab and said, I got to go, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. And Joab said, no, 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 I'm not sending you. So he called the Cushite. And said you go and deliver the message and he told him the message go and tell the king but I must said I want to go I want to go I want to go Job said I didn't send you any there's runner in the church out of you boys and girls raise your hand if you think you're the fastest all right you think you're the fastest shall we determine that right here right now <laughs> all right let after sabbath hours maybe tomorrow at the youth program all right Hymas outran kush or the kushite and got to king david first but he had no message so king david said stand aside stand there then the kushite came after <sighs> and then he said what's the message and he had the message and he gave it to david so let me ask who was better out of 
high mass who had no message but could run so fast and Cush or the Cushite who had the message but was slow who was better let me have a chorus answer there the Cushite he was slow was he still the better one all right good so stole and steady wins the race right and the race is not for the swiftest and it is for God that shows mercy so have the message the message we have the message of the love of Christ and share it any, anyhow all right let's have the last one maybe this is a tough one it's found also he's found this time in the New Testament Jesus telling the story in Luke 15 it was a story of the lost boy we call him the prodigal son and the older brother how many know that story let me see your hand you know the story very good I'm not gonna retell it but you know that the 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 prodigal son was lost right but then he came back home and what did the father do to him when he came back home he hugged him and blessed him but there was the older brother he didn't go home but in his heart he was not at home and then he was even angry when his older his younger brother came back so who is better the lost boy or his older brother yes pastor the lost boy was better ah he was lost though he went away but he came back amen i think that's the real story there he came back how many agree with him good so the one that was at home was the one that was lost the one that was lost was the one that was found so go and think about that whether it's Cain and Abel Esau Jacob it has um, I, I mas or the Cushite the old boy or the lost son let us be better and God will make us better this year in Jesus name Amen. the title of my sermon for the next few minutes is running to win ready set go running to win ready set what everyone let us pray father we're grateful for the grace that you have given us to witness another year we start this year in your name we make bold to say this shall be a year of completions in our lives a year of completions in our church a year of completion in this institution open our minds to behold wondrous things from your word i ask in jesus name amen running to win ready set what everyone you know life is a race and we are all in it life is a long distance race for some longer than others but it's long it's a hard road we're running towards heaven God in his infinite mercy has put various stops on the road so we can take a break and we can kick start we can celebrate the finishing of a step and the celebrating of the beginning of another and such rhythm of ending and beginning is like oil that passes on as we go on in the rays of light and so Paul will have been a sports freak if he was alive today he will have had on his DSTV all kinds of sports channel he loved sports apparently I can conclude from him using a lot of sports illustration in his books and in the text of today we find another one about running he pictures a colosseum he pictures a, a, a race a road race and he pictures weights that runners used to practice you know 
and, and, and get B, you know. Um, my son was warning us over the months. He said, uh, when I come, you're going to see a little difference. I said, we'll see. Now, I knew I wasn't going to match him. We'll fix one or two Yoruba clothes for him. And apparently, he had walked on the weight a little longer than I imagined. And we really needed to have him raise his hand so we can put his booba. <laughs> so he said, when I come back, you better extend it because it may get bigger. So they had weights that they would practice with. Some of them in the olden times will even take those weights, you know, to the Colosseum. And while they are waiting for the weasel to blow, they'll be lifting their weights and practicing some more, sweating before the rays. This is the picture that Paul paints. And it takes us all to the Colosseum as a race is about to begin and he has something to say. But let's first hear the way this was also very well said uh, by a composer in hymn 6 to 7. 6 to 7. I like us to sing that together. It says, We are climbing Jacob's ladder, soldiers of the cross. Every round goes how? Higher and higher. Soldiers of the cross. Now let's sing that song beautifully together. Can we do that? Six to seven. As we picture that race that is beginning. about to begin now and Paul writes in Hebrews 12 says in verse 1 therefore since we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses let us throw off somebody say throw off let's throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that easily entangles us and let's run with patience or perseverance the race marked out for us so I need us to begin with that last, that last phrase. The race marked out for us. Can we all say that together? How often people climb a ladder to the zenith of it only to find out that the ladder was, the ladder was leaning against the wrong building. But they have climbed all the way to the top of it. If that's not where they are going, what will they do? They'll climb down to start again. You know, the hair hostesses were given the last announcement and demonstration as a particular plane I was in was about to start moving. Door closed. 
but they had not moved out of the tarmac and then they said just in case someone didn't hear us this plane is headed for the mentioned where I guess maybe it was maybe the Potakot and all of a sudden somebody sprung out of his seat and said no 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 he's not going to Potakot he's going to Oweri <laughs> of course the man disembarked immediately thank God he had a chance for the door to still be open for him the man will have landed in Potakot and he intended to go to Oweri I was listening to someone the other day and he said can someone help us tell those announcers in the airport to speak Nigerian English in Nigeria have you been as frustrated as me sometimes they are announcing I don't even know how to speak phonetics anyway but you know it's something like that and you know when I'm traveling with my wife I have to have my head on screwed right because if I make a mistake you know I'll have to um, pay for it so in in my I take off my pride and I'll quietly go and ask what did you say <laughs> <laughs> if you have done like that raise your left hand In Nigeria, I speak Nigerian English. You know, if you see those people announcing, if you meet them in the restroom, they'll start speaking Igbo or Yoruba. I say, is it, is it not you that was there? Or oh, oh, someone say Ibada. <laughs> the Bible says, let us run the race that is what? Marked out for us. Turn to your neighbor, say, are you running the race God gave you to run? Or are you running another man's race? There are too many people that are living in so much frustration because they are using another man's clock to run their lives, another woman's pace. Somebody who has been practicing night and day may make one kilometer in uh, less than a minute or whatever for me it may be one hour as long as i arrive at the destination are you with me are you running the race marked out for you or are you running another person's race he says let us run the race that is measured out for us don't run at another person's face. Don't, don't go where God sent someone else. No, don't do that. In the story we had of the children, that race was not for high mass. It was for the Kushite. And he was put to shame in front of the king. You will not be put to shame in Jesus' name. Now, the man got there first. Someone else got their second, or should I say last? Am I right if I say that? Somebody got there first, the other got there how? Last. And it was the one who got there last that was crowned. Run the race, mark that for you. Some of you are not called to be singers. So somebody wanted to sing one day could not sing and he said the title of my song is on a hill far away you know that song right so the man saw him and said that's your song find a hill very very far away I'm going to sing it there <laughs> amen? amen if singing is not your thing do the one that is your thing Everybody has got a thing that is their thing. God purpose your life to do that thing or those things. It might not be celebrated yet, but it is because you have not put your strength into it. By the time you put your strength into it, people will begin to copy you. If tying gele is your thing, you know you can make a living tying gele. You understand what I'm saying? 
you have not made a living tying gele because you have not perfected the act of tying gele that God born you to tie. You tie gele like I would tie it. What a shame when God made you to tie gele. I mean, think of something that looks like nothing and put so much strength that God gave you into it. If that's the race God marked out for you, the Yoruba says, Ibe Lowowa. There is money in debt in, in, in places that I'm. All right, obviously, you have read that thing in Lagos, right? Right? There's a man who has mobile toilets in Lagos and he has, he's richer than you. I'm trying to make him to join my church. Hello? There's money in what? <laughs> you know, there were two guys who were canoeing and they got lost. There was storm, they got lost. So one of them was freaking out. Said, we're in the middle of nowhere and I will be, we're lost and we're going to die. The other guy was just smiling. So why are you smiling? He said, because I know we will be found. So how do you know you'll be found? Your phone is not going through. There is no way I know you'll be found. He said, my pastor will find me. He said, how is it that you know that your pastor is the one that will find you? He said, the kind of money God is using me to give in his church eh, and ministry. The kind of service that I'm doing. Eh, my usefulness to God in my place. That man will find me. Now, he didn't say my wife will find me. <laughs> God will find you in Jesus' name if you ever lost. It is because you are running the race that God sent you to run and you are valuable. There is a young man who just finished church. If he's serving, maybe he just started. He was speaking to some of our guys before we went on, on holiday. And he was talking about a place where he was working. He's waiting to go to service. And he said, I ain't you going back? He said, no, they will not start until I get there. I said, how come? No, the boss has said, unless I'm there, that thing can't start. The Lord will make you valuable like that in Jesus' name. Amen. That comes when you run the race. God asks you to run. You know, have you noticed that there will not be a different cadre of heaven that the VC will go to? Or the GC president or the conference president or anyone in between? Or the church pastor or the member? Is it not the same heaven? Or is it a different heaven? Some of you, so you can have position in the house of God, you have been using devil's tactics. It is the same heaven. Once you are running the race, God asks you to run. The reward is the same heaven. One started in the morning, one started at one hour before closing time. Jesus gave them the same reward. This year, you will run the race God has given you to run. And you will be celebrated in the name of Jesus. Notice it says, run with perseverance. Run with endurance. You know, that's one theme that keeps reoccurring in that book and in that chapter. You know, it says, run with patience. Run with endurance. Don't get weary. Don't give up. He continues to say that in his writings. All along, he's saying, run vehemently with perseverance determination on hasting on resting on orring yet on delaying going steadily refusing to be deflected or deterred no matter the obstacle endurance don't you remember and say endure. endure no matter the race that you have to run up the hill down the cravings plain or smooth and deal because Jesus will go with you this year 2016 in the name of Jesus you will never go alone you know then Paul says these are three things that will be divine resources for you as you run the race three things and I'll tell you very quickly and see how much of it we can flesh out 
Number one, look around at the winners. Say that with me. Look around at the winners. Number two, look at yourself. Let me hear you say that. Number three, look unto Jesus. Oh, no, look at Jesus. Come on, say that with me, everyone. Well, let's see how much we can give some flesh to each one of these. You know, that text says, we are surrounded by a cloud of what? A cloud of what, everyone? Witnesses. And oftentimes, in my interpretation, I will say, just like I'm preaching, and you are my witnesses that I'm preaching, I'm not sleeping. Even though somebody is sleeping because my sermon is boring. That's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about spectator spots. You see, church is not a spectator spot. You don't come and show off and the rest of us watch you show off. And I think we got it all wrong. That's why we're fighting. We think anybody who holds the mic is showing off and here I am watching no the only spectators are God and the heavenly hosts all of us are actors and workers and, and, and runners in the household of faith if you agree with the word of God let me hear you say amen Church is not about sitting, warming the pew, letting someone else do the talking or do the doing. We all work for the Lord, whether by saying amen or by asking for it. Whether by showing love to the person on the pew or the person in your neighborhood. But I'll tell you the real witnesses are the matters. I'm told the word for witnesses there is the same word for matters. Those saints who have gone ahead of us, who have died in the faith and are resting in the grave. A few of them God took with him like Elijah without dying, like Moses through resurrection. Are you with me? In the 24 elders will have been some of those that he allowed to go with him as first fruit as he went up to heaven. But what he's saying is, keep before you your knowledge of great men and women who gave their life. You know, when you read chapter 12, it begins with one word. And what is that word? Therefore. Now, help me out here. Do you say therefore if you have said nothing before? What is before chapter 12? Chapter 11. And what is in chapter 11? You know, so he said, these guys sown in two but will not deny their faith. These guys who withstood temptation at the risk of their lives. These guys like Abraham who went where they knew not only because said God said go uh, these women who gave it all up and followed their newfound faith like Ruth these ones like Esther who reached alive and stayed us and went before the king these are the witnesses the martyrs they're not looking at us but rather their works testify if you understand the word of God, let me hear you say amen. amen. So that's why Romans makes it very clear. He says in Romans 15, 4, he says these things have been written to us as what? Examples. Are you with me? They're examples for us so that we will remember. In, in Romans 15, 4, if you don't have it, for whatsoever things are written at four times are written for our learning that we may through patience and comfort of the scriptures have hope. God will give you hope in the name of Jesus. So keep before you stories of these matters, these men and women of faith, faith of our fathers living still, faith of our fathers. Let's not forget Patriarchs like Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob. Let's not forget prophets like Moses and Elijah, Samuel, Daniel, Jeremiah, apostles like Paul and Peter, John, James. Let's not forget 
stealing and the other martyrs and, and, and people who were before us. Let's not forget Ellen G. White, Joseph Bates, and, and those uh, who, who came down, left their, their comfort and came down like Babcock, by whose name we call this institution. The spirit of Babcock must be like a witness that we remember every time we do business in this place. If you love the word of God, let me hear you say amen. amen. So he says, let us consider those witnesses. Then he says, look at yourself. I love the way he puts it. Examine yourself. He says, throw off the things that hinder you and the things that entangle you. Just like I described, as the race begins, you don't carry with you those weights and training implements when you want to run. No, you don't run like that. What will happen to such a person? He will fall or fail or come behind. Every hindrance must be thrown away. Turn to your neighbor and say, throw away every hindrance. See, this is very interesting. It is called divestment. Divest yourself of hindrances. Throw off in, you see, they're not called sins. And what is a hindrance to you may not be a hindrance to me. What it constitutes a hindrance to me may not be a hindrance to you. It may depend on our past history, on our struggles, on our situations in life. That's why Jesus said, even if your right hand becomes a hindrance, do what? Divest it, cut it off. If your right eye becomes a hindrance, do what? Pluck it out. Because finishing this race is more important than anything, anything, and anything. May the Lord give us victory in the name of Jesus. Then he talks of sins that easily entangle, that easily beset. You see, everyone has his own price, you know. Everyone. Everyone has that thing that you know, I mean, that one would tempt me, or you may not tempt another. Sins that refuse to easily go away. So there was this situation one day. You know, a young girl had been attending church for a while, and it was time to baptize. How many remember those days when there would be an interview for the baptismal candidates? Uh, the elders will come with their shovels, and diggers hello <laughs> all right all right all right those are good old days they say so they began to question this girl and then they asked and this is the question has Christ made a difference in your life one of them asked and the girl said certainly yes Jesus has made a difference in my life then they came a little closer and said well do you still sin and the girl said, yeah, I still find myself sinning. Then he said, you see, how can we baptize you? You were sinning bef before you became a Christian. Now you have joined church, you are still sinning. How are we going to baptize you? And the girl saw that she was about to lose and was praying in her heart. And the answer came. Do you want to hear the answer? She said, this is what I think. Before I was a Christian, I was running after sin now that I've become a Christian I'm running from sin away from sin do you see the difference and she said but sometimes sin overtakes me sometimes the difference between us and those who have not accepted faith should be that we are no longer running towards sin but we are running away from sin if ever sin were to catch up and make us fall we get up and Jesus lifts us up and cleanses us again and covers us with the rope of his righteousness do you say amen, amen. oh don't you go looking for those who fell so you can report and record because Jesus has promised his grace for us so say keep looking unto Jesus the author and what finisher of our faith. He's the author. He's the finisher. He's the perfecter. He's the originator. He's the sustainer of our faith. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Yes, there are witnesses. Great saints that have gone before. 
but they have no strength to give you only Jesus can sustain you Jesus is your personal coach hello Jesus is your personal trainer now you know when you get that big you have a coach you understand how many people have a coach to themselves maybe you are trying to play basketball or maybe you are trying to get rich so you are following them to also play golf with your pot belly <laughs> you know how that goes with politicians they can't play nothing but that's where they cut the deals so everybody gets the right gear and they are going after a small ball in a green grass now how many of you have a personal coach for your sports okay you're trying to lose weight how many have a personal coach you're all so poor you don't have to go out and look for other members but listen to this you know that's a joke right Jesus is your personal coach do you say amen, amen. I mean you have to get big some people have their hair stylist exclusively to themselves am I right don't worry your husband will get you one some people have a personal cook a personal nutritionist Jesus is all that to you personal coach you're not excited yet I'm sorry for you Jesus is your personal coach I mean he, 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 he personally coaches you how does it make you feel huh how does it make you feel okay they're, they're still trying to warm up it's a new year if you are happy Jesus is your personal coach your personal trainer your sustainer shout a loud amen this morning so you can make it and go for the gold he has customized just what you need for you and he's taking you at your pace not my pace will somebody hear that I may be struggling with what you have already overcome 10 years ago but my personal coach is still working with me and thank God you are not the Holy Ghost the last I checked I'm running the race mad down for me and Jesus is my focus I like a word there in verse 3 he says don't grow weary and lose heart you know don't don't have an exhausted collapse like runners have you've been running so much so long and then then now and begin to give up and there's a collapse you will not have spiritual collapse this year in Jesus name Amen. you know you can be so busy working for God that you forget God ask me about it you can be so busy giving and giving the word of God and the things of God that you are so dry and difficult to live with or work with you see because when you continue to withdraw and withdraw and you are not depositing and depositing you will be in the minus in the negative and there will be a spiritual collapse some of us need a personal retreat amen somebody we will not collapse in jesus name amen. you know that that verse begins it says consider him and i found out that the word that is used for consider is the same word logarithm and anybody remembers logarithm calculation so he says consider calculate so to win this race you got to calculate hello you have to calculate which means you give attention to details you really consider the attitude of Jesus consider the joys of Jesus consider the interest of Jesus it takes calculating let's jump to the last part of this and quickly go home he says in verse 12 and I like that. It tells us what we must do from verse 12. 
Are you there with me? Therefore, do what? Strengthen the weak hands. He begins to tell us about some things we must do. He says, run tough. Tell your neighbor, run tough. Strengthen the weak hands. That's what he says there. Which means, when energy is flagging or the arms are dropping and, and flapping and the knees are wobbling, come for a recharge so that you can run tough. Every feeble and weak hands receive strength in the name of Jesus. Joel says, let the weak say, I am strong. Today I declare, I am strong in the name of Jesus. I need you to say that. I am strong in the name of Jesus. You know the Bible says, let the weak say, I am what? So let me hear you say, I am strong in the name of Jesus. So that's what God intends. Run tough, but don't run tough all alone. He continues in the next verse. What do you do running tough? Verse 13. All right. Make straight paths for your feet so that what is laying may be, not be dislocated, but healed instead. I like a different version there. He's saying, make the path plain. For the lame to walk. Give me a different version. Give me a different version. He's saying, those that are weak, be of help to them. Don't give a... Okay, good. Well, whatever. <laughs> Alright. Don't give room for the weak to get weaker. So, run tough, yes. But run tough together. Somebody say run tough together. Which means you are running well only when you are helping those that are weak to receive strength through your actions. The Lord help us in this duty of mutual help in the fellowship of the mat. Remember that story when four brothers carried a frame so they can see Jesus? Together we run tough. This year, none will be disfellowshipped in the name of Jesus. None will be put to any open shame in the name of Jesus. Yes, run tough, but also run tough together. Not just that. He says, run after peace and holiness. I like that. Verse 14. He says, make every effort to live in peace with how many people? Ah, oh my lord this is a toughie it may be easy to live in peace with God but living in peace with church folks man that needs some heavenly grace hello God says we should pursue peace it is a picture of of a fugitive you are running running after something you are pursuing with every fiber of your being you are making every effort a uniquely aggressive word is used here do everything to ensure that there is peace hello peace in the home will not elude us this year in the name of Jesus. Peace amongst us as workers. Peace amongst believers. The Lord will grant us peace in Jesus' name. Verse 15 says, See to it that no one misses the grace of God. See to it that no one does what? Here he's saying, as we run this race, trying to get to the finish line, do not become graceless. This text attacks all forms of gracelessness in our midst. What does that mean? We are saved by grace. If I'm right, say amen. amen. Good. When are you going to stop needing the grace of God in your life? When? First elder, when? You have been at this thing for a long time. Elder for a long time. You still need the grace of God? You do? 
all these years you still need the grace we should give you grace ah i don't know who ordained you you still need the grace of god listen if you will always need the grace of god let me see you raise your right hand eh yeah. so that's true eh okay number one don't forget that is the grace of god that brought you this far if you ever find sin overtaking you run for grace he says where sin abound grace what much more abounds there will never be less grace for any situation of your life this year the grace of god will be sufficient for you oh your amen is not loud i said the grace of god will be sufficient for you yeah. eh? you know you're not used to sufficiency you're not used to it whether during the holiday you are grabbing uh, the tie of the chicken i saw you <laughs> fighting for who will have the biggest piece of the meat you are not used to sufficiency we're africans born in poverty When it comes to the grace of God, you will have it yafu yafu in the name of Jesus. If ever any situation comes, remember you are still under His grace. Don't give up the fight. Since we all need grace, will you give me grace? Will you give her grace? Will you give him grace? Grace means even when we have seen and heard and read we are so slow in believing the bad thing about our fellow believer we refuse to believe it's true even when it's true grace means we fight to be sure that this person is propped up even though we all see him wobbling and falling we don't easily give up because god does not give up on us May God make us a grace-filled community in the mighty name of Jesus. So run tough, run tough together. Run after peace and holiness and be graceful, not graceless. Ah, then he says, don't allow the root of bitterness to grow to defile people. Which means, don't allow bitterness in you. Has somebody wronged you? If you have been alive long enough, somebody has wronged you. If you say nobody has wronged you, you are starting the new year with a lie. Somebody has wronged you. Somebody has wronged me. Maybe many have. But don't allow bitterness to take root. Much more than that, don't play with doctrines and, and teachings that may be destructive because it may be like a, a bitter root. That can bring poison to the body of Christ. The Lord will cleanse us from apost uh, apostasy and bitterness in the name of Jesus. Finally, he says, Tame your appetite. Everybody say that here. You know the story of Esau. He did not tame his physical appetite and he didn't tame his sexual appetite. And he was looking for repentance, he didn't find it. Now, let's put that in perspective. God will forgive anyone who asks. But it was impossible to restore back to Esau his birthright which he sold. Was it possible? No. There are some things that you just can't have it back. Be careful how you allow your appetites to run you. We are in this problem because Adam and Eve allowed their appetites to to be beyond the word of God in their lives. Is this still happening today? Let's remember Esau and victory will be asked as we run the race of life in the name of Jesus. A dog was always boasting in the company of his dog friends. And what did he say? He said, I can run better than anybody. I can run and catch anyone. And he will boast. And his dog friends will just be 
watching and saying, Kai, I wish I can run like him. So one day, there was a rabbit that the dog saw, and all his friends were there. And he said, Catch that rabbit, Mr. Fastest Runner. And the dog began to run better, of course, than all the other dogs. And ran and ran after the rabbit. And the rabbit went away free. Ah, if you are that dog, what will happen to you? You will run from your friends, won't you? They began to laugh at him. Hey, Mr. Rona, rabbit you couldn't catch. After they laughed at him like that, he said, listen, friends. There's a difference here. They said, what's the difference? You see, the rabbit was running for his life. Me, I was running for my dinner. I was running for my food. And the perspective makes all the difference. You know? This race we're in is running for life. Running for eternal life. Give it all it takes. Give it every energy that remains in you. Don't back down. Don't back out. Your life is on the line. But if you are in this race, because of peanuts because of food or salary anytime problem comes you chicken out if you are here this morning and you are running this race for eternal life let me see you raise your right hand god almighty will sustain us as we run with patience as we run looking unto jesus as we run Shedding off and divesting every impediment and every sin. May the Lord grant us eternal life at the end of life. May we run the race that will please God and not man. And may we, like Paul, be able to say, I fought the good fight, I finished the race. May we receive a well done from him on that day. Let us run with grace without bitterness pursuing holiness and peace in the mighty name of Jesus Zico are you in the house praise the Lord praise the Lord as we run this race it's possible that we grow weary but we should not be discouraged because in our weakness God is what? God is strong When something seems too hard to handle, too swift to conquer, so far away to touch. When all your dreams begin to shatter, if the race you're running is a bond of east to bone. That's the time to sing. Climbing the mountain step by step. Climbing the mountain day by day. Climbing the mountain all the way. Climbing the mountain. I'm gonna make it one step at a time. One step at a time. One step at a time With Jesus by my side One step at a time One step at a time I'm climbing the mountain One step at a time In your 
your race You may grow weary Don't be discouraged In your weakness God is strong Remember then He will never leave you No, He won't forsake you In your weakness God is strong and it's time to sing Climbing the mountain Step by step Climbing the mountain Day by day Climbing the mountain All the way I'm Climbing the mountain I'm gonna make it One step at a time One step at a time One step at a time Jesus by my side Oh, one step at a time One step at a time I am climbing the mountain I am climbing the mountain One step 